In the day's other news, bombings rocked election rallies in Pakistan, leaving at least 130 people dead and wounding more than 300 others. The worst attack was in the southwest, where victims included a candidate for a provincial legislature. Islamic State militants claimed responsibility. Meanwhile, former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif and his daughter returned to the country to face prison terms for corruption. Another American soldier has died in Afghanistan, the second U.S. combat death this week. Pentagon officials say an Army sergeant was killed yesterday in a firefight. About 15,000 American troops are now stationed in Afghanistan. Police in Britain say they have located the source of a nerve agent that killed that woman and sickened her partner, whom you just heard John refer to. After an all-out search, they found a bottle in the woman's home that tested positive for Novichok. It is unclear where the bottle came from. Last March, a former Russian spy and his daughter were poisoned with Novichok in a nearby town. Britain blames Russia, but the Kremlin denies it. The United Nations Security Council imposed an arms embargo on South Sudan today. The U.S. drafted resolution received nine yes votes, the minimum required for adoption. Ambassador Nikki Haley said it is a vital step to ending the five-year civil war. The goal of this resolution is simple. If we're going to help the people of South Sudan, we need the violence to stop. And to stop the violence, we need to stop the flow of weapons to armed groups and that they're using to fight each other and to terrorize the people. There have been several attempts at ceasefires in South Sudan since 2015, including one last month. All have failed. The UN's migration agency announced today that Algeria has halted the mass expulsions of migrants into the Sahara Desert. Last month, the Associated Press reported 13,000 people were dropped off at the borders with Niger and Mali over 14 months. Now they are being held instead in crowded jails. It is an effort to stop them from heading north to Europe. Back in this country, the Inspector General for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services says former Secretary Tom Price misspent $341,000 on travel. That includes booking charter flights and military aircraft rather than using commercial airlines. Price was forced out last fall after reports of his travel spending surfaced. The U.S. Commerce Department has formally lifted a ban on American companies selling parts to Chinese telecom giant ZTE. The Trump administration imposed the ban for violating sanctions on Iran and North Korea. Then it agreed to a settlement that included a $1 billion fine. And on Wall Street, the Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 94 points to close at 25,019. The Nasdaq rose two points and the S&P 500 added three. For the week, the Dow gained 2 percent. The Nasdaq and the S&P 500 rose more than one and a half percent. Still to come on the NewsHour, Mark Shields and Raihan Salam analyze President Trump's chaotic trip to Europe and the lost music of jazz great John Coltrane.